Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Rintaro Koike, and he is Shogo Hayashi. Uh, we are from Japan. Uh, we are security analysts from NTT Security Holdings based in Japan. Uh, this is our first time coming to Luxembourg. Uh, we are pleased to present at this conference. Our company provides managed security services, uh, and we are engaged in threat research, malware analysis, and custom signature creation uh, for ETR and network security products. In this presentation, uh, we will talk about uh, malicious MSIX file that we have been researching for the past eight months. Okay, first, uh, I will introduce about basic information of the MSIX file. I'm sure many of you are unfamiliar with the MSIX file. Uh, until now, MSI file has been the most common packaging format for installer on Windows. The MSI file has been around for over 20 years. Uh, you all know this very well, uh, but uh, sometimes MSI file can not use new technology, so the MSI X file was proposed. The MSI X file was created as a successor to the MSI file. The MSIX file is a modern format, uh, packaging format. So uh, the MSIX file was introduced in 2018 and supported starting with Windows 10 uh, 17 or 9. Uh, so uh, it has been five years already, uh, but the MSIX file is still not well known. In general, the MSI file is still widely used. It is not uncommon for people to not know that MSI X file is exist. Uh, so the next two twenty or uh, thirty minutes, uh, we are going to talk about MSI X file. First, uh, let's take a look at the structure of MSI X file. In order to simply understand MSIX file, uh, we will use uh, docx file as an example. Uh, in the past, uh, Microsoft Office used extensions such as DLC, EXLS, and PPT. You all know this, but uh, since Microsoft Office 2007, uh, this has been replaced by docx, XLSX, and PPTX. This is an X was added to the extension. Uh, what about uh, internal structure? Uh, previously, DLC file, XLS file, and PPT file uh, were in file format uh, called CDF v2. CDF v2 is composite document file version 2. Uh, CDF v2 is a format that has been widely used for Windows files for a long time. Uh, on the other hand, uh, docx file, xlx file, and pptx file are uh, zip file. Uh, the zip file contains XML files. So this is sometimes called OOXML. Uh, this same relationship also applies to MSIX file. The MSI file that is traditional installer package is CDFV2. And its successor, the MSIX file, is a zip file. And the zip file contains XML files. So broadly speaking, uh, MSIX file has undergone a similar evaluation to Microsoft Office files. OK, let's take a look at the internal structure of the MSIX file. As already introduced, oh, MSIX file is a zip file. Once extracted, uh, there will be several files based on XML files. First of all, or application files. Uh, there are application files being installed. Next is uh, AppX manifest. AppX manifest contains the uh, information necessary to open this MSX, MSIX file. When researching MSIX file, you need to look at this file. Next is AppX block map. Uh, this contains a list of files contained in the MSIX file. 
binary uh, upx signature. Uh, in principle, MSIX file must have a digital signature. So this is the signature data. Okay. Next, let's take a look at the behavior uh, when the MSIX file is executed. As already introduced, uh, the basic behavior is executed based on AppX manifest. This provides typical installer behavior. At this time, the basic behavior is executed by a process called appInstaller.exe. AppInstaller.exe is executed by svchost.exe, a child process of services.exe, which is a child process of winnit.exe. MSIX file has a framework from, uh, called Package Support Framework, uh, PSF. This is used to achieve flexible processing. The goal is often to resolve compatibility. Uh, by using this, uh, you can perform more processing from MSIX file. A particular interesting feature of PSF is start script. By using start script, uh, you can execute partial script when executing the MSIX file. This is useful for developers, but uh, it is also useful for attackers. Traditional MSI file has a feature uh, called custom action. Uh, many malicious MSI files use custom action to achieve malicious behavior. So similarly, malicious MSI X files use PSF to achieve malicious behavior. In fact, uh, there are malicious MSIX files that do not use PSF, but uh, after researching malicious MSIX files for eight months, uh, we found that uh, almost all malicious MSIX files use PSF. So uh, the rest of this presentation, uh, we focus on malicious MSIX files that we use PSF. By the way, uh, how is an uh, MSIX file created? Several tools exist for creating MSIX file. The most famous one is MSIX Packaging Tool. This is an official tool released by Microsoft. Uh, you can create an MSIX file by inputting the information according to the on-screen instructions. Official documentation files are fully present, so, uh, but it's a little complicated. There are also third-party tools. Uh, advanced installer can easily create MSIX file. Uh, many malicious MSIX files are created using advanced installer. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the specific other cases. Spiel Kruva is uh, one of the attack groups that use malicious MSIX files. Spiel Kruva is associated with a group called Dev0569 and Votaminiades. Uh, they are motivated by money. Their activity has been observed since at least 2019. The attack begins with malvertising. Uh, they used to, used to use exploit kits, but now uh, they're using distributing malware uh, through fake software distributions. Uh, there are many types of malware being distributed. Uh, basically, uh, it's a uh, bank intrusion or uh, information stealer. They are aggressive and use a variety of attack techniques. And from February 2023, uh, Street Grover started abusing MSIX file. This is a map of victims known to our company. Uh, we are a Japanese company, so uh, we know many Japanese victims, but uh, attacks have been observed all over the world. We will introduce a simple attack flow of Steel Clover Labs Google Ads. 
when users search for popular software names on Google, Steel Clover's fake website came up as a sponsored link. When a user downloads software from the fake website, an MSIX file is downloaded. When the user executes the MSIX, MSIX file, it's download and execute additional malware. At this time, uh, PowerShell script is being executed using PSF, ultimately uh, banking intrusion or information stealer is executed to steal credentials. There are a large number of fake software distribution websites used by Steve Clover. Here are some of the websites we observed. In fact, it entails nearly 100 legitimate websites. Of particular interest is Steve Clover's tendency to follow trends. Uh, when ChatGPT became a hot topic, uh, they quickly adopted ChatGPT and Meet Jenny as decoitemas for fake distribution websites. Popular software is often misused as a decoitema. Okay. What kind of process occurs when a malicious MSIX file is executed? Uh, as already introduced, the main behavior of MSIX file is executed uh, from appinstaller.exe, but PSF is different. P uh, PowerShell.exe is executed from a process called AI stub. This is a file contained in the MSIX file. Uh, AI stub was executed by SIHost.exe, uh, which is a child process of SPC host.exe, uh, child process of success.exe. If you don't know about MSIX file or PSF, uh, it seems like PowerShell.exe was suddenly executed from a strange process. Here is a little introduction to the PowerShell script that Steel Clover executes. The implementation has changed by, uh, little by little, but uh, they can be broadly classified into two types. The type one uh, uses web client to download and execute malware from the external website. Uh, this type one is the most common. This includes a lot of obfuscation and analysis interference. The type 2 is executes malware contained within MSIX file. This is occasionally observed. Uh, this is very simple code. A characteristic of Steve Grover is the bias in the infrastructure it uses. Steve Grover makes uh, heavy use of AS8. 342 IP addresses. Um, in the extreme, almost all infrastructure is the IP address of this IAS. Um, it also has various other characteristics. So uh, if you and uh, if you are interested, please contact us. Okay. From here, I say to Mr. Hayashi. Thank you. So I will talk about uh, defense. So, by the way, I'd like to ask a question. How many people, so, uh, have you ever seen about malicious MSIX before? Please raise your hands. Thank you. So, only a few people I can see. Yeah, so that's great because that's why we are here to share the information about it. Yeah, you know, it took about 17 hours from Japan. <laughs> yeah, so that was so long way. <laughs> but now I'm so happy. So, so from here, uh, I'll talk about defense. So how can we detect attacks with MSIX by Steel Clover that we have introduced so far? I will also introduce countermeasure to prevent by the attack. 
and defect detection will be introduced on basis of monitoring endpoint behavior such as EDR or SISMO. So first, we introduce a detection method that focus on file creation behavior. If a user opens the MSIX file, malicious files and other files included in the MSIX files are extracted under C program files Windows apps. After that, PowerShell script specified by start script in PSF will be executed. The behavior at this time can be detected. So the right slide is a rule written in Sigma, which is very popular these days. And uh, in the file creation, the process name is not specified, but the target file path, so C programs, files, Windows apps, and the extension .ps1, which indicates the PowerShell script file to be created under the file path uh, specified. Since both legitimate MSIX and malicious MSIX have the same process name, we do not specify anything in particular. Note that the accuracy can be further improved by adding the file name config.json here to the target file. The file co this file contains the start script of PSF. So originally I wanted to define a rule to detect if two files .ps1 and config.json are created by one process at the same time, but I use OR condition here in this slide. Because if I use AND condition instead of OR, this rule doesn't work. So what should I do? So I have attended workshop, the new Sigma tool chain yesterday, and I asked trainer, and uh, he gave me answer. I should create two rules, then create a correlation rule in Sigma. So, so this is off the topic. I'd like to tell you about file pass in Windows. So we use mmark, this was, mmark instead of black, backslash in Japan. Registry key is also the same. I don't know why, but yeah, I think it's only in Japan. So when you see the mmark in the file pass, please change it to backslash. So there is an idea that the file creation behavior is not very well known MSIX to begin with. We should let it detect the file creation behavior regardless of whether it's malicious or not. When we tried this approach, we ended up with quite a few over detections. One in particular was MSIX file named OneDriveSync.MSIX. This is used internally by Microsoft application. And as a Dropbox that also use MSIX, so it over detects a large number of these. Therefore, we do not recommend creating such a rule. Even if you create the rule and there are, no, there are not so many detections, it's still not recommended because it's difficult for analyzing EDR logs. If you find EDR logs that is MSIX file creation triggered by this rule, you don't determine whether the created MSX, MSIX files are malicious or not. This slide shows the behavior of process execution. We talk about the execution of PowerShell script when, the, when MSIX files are extracted. And the parent process that executes PowerShell script at this time is AI stub X 
64.exe or AI Stub X 86 elevated.exe. These executable files are from the advanced installer products since Steel Clover is a frequent user of this product. It will detect the behavior of the executing the PowerShell script file introduced earlier from this product in PowerShell.exe. So this allows us to detect malicious MSIX behavior by Steel Clover with almost no over detection. In this section, we present the detection of process execution and network communication behavior. In Steel Clover attacks using MSIX, we often observe redline stealer infection, but we have also observed various malware infection, such as arsenic or Vida and so on. The malware is used in the case is usually the PowerShell.exe process that downloads the malware and executes it with, within the PowerShell process without saving the downloaded malware as a file to the host. Therefore, the malware's communication to the CNC server is also executed by this PowerShell process. The download communication of this malware is basically TLS communication. The CNC server communication is used by HTTP protocol or other. It depends on malware. Redline Steeler use high port number for CNC communication, by the way. So this rule describes its characteristics. Note that this rule is a query for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, not Sigma. MSIX files usually contain two or more PowerShell script files. And the execution of these script files always create a parent-child relationship between process PowerShell processes. The child of PowerShell process then download the malware and execute it after that communication with the malware's C and C server. The last rule introduced detects the MSIX files itself by Steel Clover. We know that the actor used the same signature for MSIX files for a certain period of time. Two signatures have been observed so far. Far. Therefore, it's possible to have the creation of MSIX files with this signature detected. You can detect only malicious MSIX file. So here are some notes on how to analyze malware infected by MSI, MSIX files using endpoint logs such as ETR. These two process three are uh, one when the malware is infected by a PowerShell process and the other when the user opened an MSIX file downloaded to the desktop or a download folder. It's important to the note that each of these is a separate tree. For example, EDR detects the execution of PowerShell by the rule introduced previously. Even if you follow the process tree to find out which files was open to cause the infection, you will not be able to confirm the name of file. To find out the file name, you need to check the command line of standard Windows executable called openwith.exe. This process is invoked when you open an MSIX file. Next, we introduce countermeasures. How can we prevent malware infection by MSIX files? To do so, it's important to prohibit 
the execution of malicious MSIX files. However, as mentioned earlier, legitimate application may use it in backend. And if all MSIX file execution is prohibited, unexpected error may occur. Therefore, you can use a blocker to prohibit execution of only MSIX file by Steel Clover. As already mentioned, the signature used for MSS, MSIX files by Steel Clover are the same for a certain period of time. So, by collecting this information on a regular basis, you can ban only malicious MSIX files. If it's difficult to gather information, it's also possible to allow only the one you normally use, such as Microsoft, and prohibit others. So the following is a brief overview of recent discovered malware exploiting MSIX. The malware pretend to be MetaTrader, which provides trader service in the financial market. Note that the code signature of MSIX files, so this one, has been updated maybe in 10 days ago. So I, other IOCs for detection are listed for your protection. So let's wrap up. Finally, I will summarize our presentation. Attacks using MSIX files are still ongoing attack campaign. So without EDR or other monitoring service, user can download and run legitimate tools making this attack completely unaware of the infection and requiring attention. This attack makes extensive use of PowerShell with PSL. The process tree is unique in this attack and should be analyzed with attention. Please consider using detection rules and a blocker as a defensive measure. It is important to stay informed as attack methods are likely to change. And this describes measure for each person in church. For general user, please check if the website is legitimate when you download the software. Check domain, SL, check SSL certificate or finger uh, file signatures. For system administrator, please check the usage status of MSIX in your office and prohibit execution of MSIX, which has malicious signatures, or only permit Microsoft and the other so that you need. Please inform your general user about this cyber attack with MSIX. For security vendor, please create signatures that can detect attack and correct IOCs. In addition, alert your customers. This IOC are uh, malicious MSIX files that we found on virus total, so you can see it for defense analyzing or researching. Yes, that's all. So thank you for listening. Arigatou gozaimashita.